Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. I am replaying a video I did for Fairy Hugs, a uh, Fairy Stamper. And today we're going to make this bee mandala. And it is made with a homemade uh, wreath builder. Enjoy! Hello everyone and welcome to today's video. My name is Tracy and in today's video I'm going to show you how to make this bee mandala shaker card. Today we're going to, um, first I'm going to show you how you can make your own homemade um, wreath builder, so to speak. I bought one, it's not here yet, and I have another one that I kind of made, but I want to show you how you can make your own. So what you're going to do is you're going to take this Sizzix double-sided stick paper, it's light sticky tacky, and you're gonna cut two pieces to four inches by four inches. And that's going to make up your little, your little template here so that you can get your stamps down. You will need a stamping platform for this um, particular method, but um, most of us have one. If you don't have one, I mean, you can eyeball it, but that's gonna be rough. So I'm just gonna lay this down onto my Misty. I'm using the Misty stamping tool. And I'm gonna pull up the other side of the, gonna pull up the other side of the, going to pull up the other side of the uh, backing paper. I'm gonna take the backing paper off of the second one. I swear I will. And I'm gonna place it so it's lined up with all of the lines there. And just kind of hold it and move it around until I get it to exactly where I need it. And then you'll pull up the backing paper again. And that becomes your template. So then you just take your four inch square paper, lay it there, and then when it's time to move it, you lay it and line it up with the second one. I have a miniature one um, from Gina K, um, but I'm going to do my my own makeshift one that I did with some silicone sheets that I purchased. They're so sticky, it's hard to get them in there. It's not that they're sticky, it's that they're sticky. <laughs> I mean, they're, uh, they don't move, okay? And that's just some kitchen liner. And then I made mine, and I'm gonna line it up with the cross lines so that it's lined up from top to bottom, side to side. Not, yeah, it's not that easy. It's gonna be a lot easier if you have the wreath builder, but I don't have it yet. So I'm going this way. And I'm getting close to the right alignment. There we go, good enough. Good enough. So you see that I've got my paper on the square side there. And then when I'm ready, I can turn it to the diamond side. But one thing is, is that, um, you know, you do, it's time consuming. And this is what the little template looks like. And you just lay that in your stamping platform and then you can lay your square paper, but that's only, what, two and three eighths inches. So I need, I need four inches for what I'm trying to do. And I'll be using the little bee stamps from um, Fairy Hugs. And you can get those so at the I'm Fairy gonna Stamper get out store. my Catherine Pooler. But I'm gonna use today, all five of the bees. So we're gonna have and, a total of 40 um, bees on this I'm just picture. gonna use three uh, but colors. Before and we do that, I need to add some have. color or oxide or whatever, whatever you have, whatever's on hand. But I'm gonna be using the cummerbund, the uh, lemon chiffon, and the pucker up. And I'm gonna use some little blending, finger blending tools, and I'll be blending in a circular motion. And guys, this does not have to be perfect. It's gonna be covered with bees anyway. The whole point is to just make sure that my background is colorful. Um, I mean, honestly, you could color in all those bees if you wanted to. But I'm just gonna start with a circular motion in the center of the paper, or as close as I can get it. 
with the lemon chiffon and then I'm gonna go in with the pucker up and just circle around it and it's gonna blend in and make some orange there. I just like the way these three, three colors blend. It's a super popular blend. And then I go back over with the lemon chiffon just to kind of reinforce those colors. Now my cummerbund, and I apologize, it's, it's really dry. It's a popular color in my arsenal. And so, and I didn't buy the Embry inkers when I bought the set, so I need some re-inkers, but I'll get to that. <laughs> and what it does is when it mixes with the pucker up, it makes kind of a purple. And that's what I'm after. I'm after kind of a rainbow here. And I just kind of blend it in. And again, it does not have to be perfect because it's going to be covered up. So then I'll go back in with the pucker up and, you know, reinforce the purple in that. Just kind of going in a circle. And then I'll just complete this with the cummerbund because it's also going to be cut out. So, you know, what's happening on the corners doesn't really matter. I still fill them in just because I just need to. I don't know. <laughs> I just need to fill them in. But most of that's not really going to show. I'm just going to put away my stuff, and then I'm going to get back out my stamping platform. Wipe up my mess there a little bit. And using the template that I created there with the uh, grid paper, this is just some kitchen grid from QVC. Um, I'm gonna line up my first and always start on the square side when you position your stamp. Um, that way you get good positioning because if you start on the diamond side, it might not work out right. So I'm gonna go in with my first little B and I'm gonna position my little B right, right, right around here. I want most of the yellow to show through. And just lift up my plant, my stamping platform lid. And I'm gonna use the, the uh, Black Suit Archival Tim Holtz from Ranger. And just get my stamp juicy and stamp it down might stamp down twice until the stamp kind of gets itself conditioned. Then I'm going to turn the paper to the diamond side and ink up my stamp. See, I don't move my stamp at all, just my paper. And you see it's starting to make that circular pattern. I'm going to turn it again, and I'm always turning anti-clockwise. Sometimes I mess up and turn it the wrong way, but it's okay, <laughs> any way you wanna go. Yeah, I'm just gonna stamp down the next little B. And it's so cool, I, I love, love, love this technique. Move my paper again, stamp in the same place. And as, you're, as you start stamping, your stamp kinda of gets conditioned with ink and you only need to press down once. So it goes a lot faster, but the first couple of stamps Oh, I kind of kind of got to fight with it a little bit. Already looking cool. Got one more, so it's you're going to stamp eight times each time around. And then once I've got that done, I'm going to put it back into the square position because I want to do a different B now. And let's go in with, and you can do all the same B. You can do fairies, you can do whatever you want. And I'm gonna go in with this little sideways flying B and I'm gonna set him up so he's not really touching, but he's real close to the other Bs. And then just set my lid down, lift it up. Sometimes it'll pick up your paper, no problem. Just put your paper back, it's close enough. And then I'm gonna do him twice. Like I said, you gotta kinda condition the stamp. And I'll go ahead and stamp that circle off camera. And there we are, that one's finished. And so I'll go in and choose my next one. Same thing, start out with the square side. Choose your stamp. Let's get that little B off of there. Get a different little B. And I'm gonna get this little this little flying bee right here. I'm gonna position it again so it's not touching the others, but it's very close. 
And yeah, see it'll lift your paper, but it's okay because you, you had your paper positioned already and you know where it goes. So I'll stamp the first one down and then I'll stamp the rest off camera. I don't know if you want to watch me stamping 40 bees. See how the paper stuck? That's okay. And I'll go ahead and complete that. We'll stamp one more so you can see. Now, if you had the template, of course, um, you'd probably get a little bit more accurate, but uh, this is good enough for me. I'm going to select another stamp and look for my placement, and I'm going to do the big one now. Make sure to turn your paper to the square side. before you decide on placement. And I just want him in there, him or her. I want the little buzzy guy in there in a comfortable spot. I'm gonna lift my stamping platform. Yeah, it's stuck to my paper, though that's okay. And then I will go ahead and make sure that's positioned again. Ink up my stamp and press down. And he's stuck to the paper. That's okay. He's on there. I'm going to go ahead and turn my paper and stamp the rest of the circle off camera. Okay, so we finished that one. We'll get him cleaned up. And now we have another little bee we need to get into there. Because um, I wanted to use all the bees in the kit, in the set. So I'm going to position my paper again. Select this little bee. He, uh, he goes the opposite direction of the second bee that I stamped. Go, let's see, well, let's get him turned sideways a little bit there. Just want a want good fit. That's the main purpose of that is just, we want him to fit because it's a mandala. So there's no rhyme or reason other than this one's made up of bees. <laughs> I'll go ahead and stamp that first one. Yep, I like the placement, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn my paper. And repetitive process, real easy, but it can be tedious just turning and turning and turning. And it's okay if he stamps off. I'll go ahead and complete that off camera. Okay, so I've got all my little bees done here. Isn't that pretty? I'm going to go ahead and pull that off my stamping platform and put my stamping platform away. And now I'm going to find my circle, um, my Hero Arts Infinity Circle dies and find the right size because uh, it is going to be a shaker so I need to have some room around it to be able to pop it up. Yeah, where'd those dies go? There they are, because I just used them recently. I'm gonna go ahead and select a die here, and I'm just gonna put it up against the um, paper and see how the fit is, and that's fine. It's it's fine. It'll work just perfectly, um, because the paper itself, the card base is four and a quarter by five and a half. So I'm just gonna kinda get that lined up in there and I'm gonna tape it down so it doesn't come up when I cut it in my die cutting machine. I'm gonna go ahead and cut that out. And sometimes my machine can run a little bit slow. I'm not sure what's going on with it, but there we go. Go ahead and just pull off, carefully pull off the tape there. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and use my little pokey tool to remove the rest of that tape. I just, I cut off all my fingernails because I kept breaking them, trying to scrub them, tr the ink off. So I said, forget it, I'm just cutting them all off. <laughs> be done with it but then it makes it impossible to pick things up especially off of this silicone mat 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a card base, but I, I need black. I want to stay with black on this one. So I'm going to grab my paper trimmer and a piece of black cardstock. And this is just black cardstock that I got from Amazon, generic cheap, but it is 110 pound. So I'm going to cut that into four, uh, five and a half by four and a quarter. And I'm, I'm cutting, I need two pieces. There we go. And what I want to do is I want to take and tape the two pieces of, together kind of because I'm going to put my die cut on both pieces uh, or my die and it won't cut through both but it'll mark the spot for my uh, placement for my B mandala. So I'm going to grab my little die and it's tape and I'm going to place it on there and I'm just kind of eyeballing it where I want it. Once I get it where I want it, I'll stick the tape down. And then I want to make sure before I put it in the die cut machine that it is completely square with itself it's so that um, there's nothing hanging over. And then I'm going to go ahead and cut that out. Okay, so we've got that cut out and you see it just left an impression on the bottom piece, which is exactly what I want because it's going to be perfect for placement. And I'm just going to pull everything apart, carefully take off my tape. And that this is mint tape, by the way, you can use washi tape or, you know, whatever you you have or like to use. I've been hearing something about a yellow tape from Spellbinders. I'll have to check that out. See, now I can perfectly place my little bees. It'll fit just great. So I'm gonna go ahead and glue down the um, mandala there. And real easy to place because I had that little um, template type thing. Let me get that up out of the way so I can show you what I'm gonna do with this piece. Now the, this other piece, I am going to tape it with some uh, quarter inch double-sided sticky tape. And this is a brand new roll, so I'm gonna have to go through the torture of finding the end. Luckily, it's not like that clear tape stuff where you can never find the end. And I'm just gonna lay down tape and I'm gonna make sure it doesn't hang over anywhere. I'll be putting the I'll be putting acetate on top of this. So I want to get tape all along the edges because I'm going to put a full sheet of acetate. I don't see the point in cutting it out. <laughs> Just you know, I'm not going to do anything with the leftover acetate that I cut out that I'm aware of because there's not enough of it to really do anything with. You get any hanging over, just trim it off. I put a couple pieces of tape that one was where is it? Ah, oh, stuck to my finger. This stuff's good and sticky, I'll tell you that. And then I'm going to go ahead and take my pokey tool after I burnish those a little with my finger and just pull the backer paper off. And fight with it sometimes. <laughs> That's okay. It's funny working with sticky stuff and you stick to it and it's just crazy. I'm gonna go ahead and use, I've got this Judicans acetate that I've had for a long, long time, but it is full sheets. It is impossible, but I'm not gonna do any embossing. You could if you wanted to. I'm just gonna lay that down on there and then I'm gonna trim off the excess. And there's probably excess because I didn't get it laid down straight. That's okay. <laughs> it's handmade card. I'm not going to see it anyway. So now that I've got that all stuck down, I'm going to grab my um, strips. Uh, these are not the Doris ones, they're the scrapbook.com. I'm going to get it started and then I'm going to pull off the backing paper so that it bends around the corners easier for me. 
And I'm just gonna completely cover this circle here. Standard shaker card making here. Just try and get that one on straight so that when I butt the other one against it, there's no space for it to come out. Now I'm not gonna be putting glitter in this. And I'm just gonna pull this back a little bit because I'm not gonna use that whole piece on this part. I will be using the whole piece because of course I've got to um, reinforce the rest of the card. Just wanna make sure those stick together really well. Now the rough part about this is that, you know, you need to add like some anti-static powder to the sides of the tape and, um, you know, you end up getting powder on the tape, which makes it not want to stick as well. So I will be using glue to, um, to make sure that that sticks down. And I'm just putting this same strips here all along and you can make it a bigger shaker a higher one if you want but i'm just using some very flat sequins and mica flakes in there and as you'll find out later apparently a piece of my hair too <laughs> somebody's getting my dna can't help that if my hair falls out and i don't see it until it's already stuck down <laughs> going to put a couple more reinforcing pieces here and then the tedious job of pulling off the backing of all of that and then <laughs> you you know you can actually stack multiples of just the paper and not even have this um this double-sided sticky foam but i did it this way this time because I don't want to, you know, that uses a lot of paper that I don't really want to use. So I've got these little flat, um, I think they're called confetti from Honeybee Stamps. I'm going to put some in there of uh, the sunshine color and some of the C type color. So it picks up all the colors that are in the uh, mandala. And I'm just going to grab a small pinch of my flex. I'm, I don't like to put a whole lot in my shaker card, just enough to make it shake, <laughs> make a noise and make some pretty sparklies. So um, I'm going to go ahead and do my anti-static powder around this um, tape here. And then I do like to wipe off the acetate afterwards. And then I'm just going to place glue. And this, by the way, is my... Um, reptile adhesives. It's not really glue, it's adhesive. And I like to do that for a couple reasons, just to give me a little bit of wiggle room when I'm trying to lay that down and to just reinforce that it stays stuck together. Because, you know, I've had my hands all over that sticky tape. I'm standing up here as I lay that down just so I can make sure it's centered. And I'm not worried about the glue showing through right now because um, it's the... Um, it dries clear and then secondly once it's completely dried and that you won't see me doing that but off camera i'll be using a black pen to fill in that space so that you can't see the white through it so i'm going to go ahead and just glue this down to a black card base and this is uh some card from simon says stamps in the black licorice and i've got my card now all i need is this little sentiment and my little my little discs are sticking to the sides anyway but it's okay it still looks pretty I like it so I'm just kind of tapping to try and get them moving around and it unstuck but they're just gonna be stuck it is what it is I'm sure yours will come out much better I think I'm nothing wrong I'm not mad at how this one came out not a bit um, I'm just choosing, looking here for what kind of sentiment I want to put on here. And I think I'm going to put these Tim Holtz. Um, I'm going to put the word celebrate. And I don't know about you, but when I take these out and they're backwards, I can't always tell what the word says. But I use celebrate enough to recognize it. But I don't, I want, don't want it in white. So I'm going to take a piece of card scrap 
and I'm going to get back out my little thicker daubers and I'm not going to re-ink them at all. I'm just going to lay down the color that was already on there. And in the same, the cummerbund and the, um, what was the pink one called? I forgot. I forgot the name of the colors. Anyway, it, you'll see them in the beginning of the video. I'm just going to go ahead and place that and don't move on me. And send that through my die cut machine. Now these are delicate little guys and I fight to get them out because that T likes to get stuck right there. <laughs> so if I fight too long, I just end up ripping the paper so it'll come out and then I'm just gonna go ahead and poke out the little holes, the little spaces that are supposed to be there. I'm gonna like that, that's gonna look good. Now with these little sentiments like this, I actually like to take my tape runner and just use tape. Um, I just, it, especially when I'm working on black card, I don't want any glue peeking through. So I'm just going to lay that on there. Once I have it where I want it, I'm going to press it down and there we go. I hope you like this video today with this B Mandala Shaker card. Um, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and leave me a comment in the comment section below. And please consider subscribing to my channel. Thank you so much for watching today. Have a great day.